In this video, I'm going to simplify the Fetch API and help you get started with using this API in your browser or node environments for making API requests. When you are building applications, sometimes you would want to get data from a database. Could be you're getting a list of users, a list of products or whatever. Now, usually in settings like this, you'd have the front end, which displays the data to the user, and you'd have the back end, which provides an API address that the front end can make a request quest to and then that backend server would be able to get data from the database and return it as a response to the request that the front end is making the fetch api is an easy to use interface that allows you to make requests to api addresses for this video we'll be using this free fake api so we'll be using this to test how to make requests to different api addresses but in a real world case you would have a backend developer providing an api address that can make your request before we dive deep into the fetch api let me show you a simple use case so coming back to our fake rest api here i want to assess the to do's api this is the api i'm going to assess so coming to our code i have this javascript here now don't worry so much if this sounds confusing we're going to break it down in a second so here i have the fetch method and then i have the url which is coming from here this is the api and because the fetch method returns a promise i use the then method to capture the returned response and on that response i call the json method and because this json method also returns a promise i have another then to capture the resolved promise and here i have the json you can call this anything you can call this data you can call this result whatever you want to call it so this json here it's now going to be this array returned from the api that is if the request is successful and then i loop through the items here and on this container this is the container here and here i capture the, the container so on this container i modify the inner html and i add a div with a class of item into this container here it's going to add div item something like this and then i have the user id and then i capture the user id property on the item which is this i also capture the id this then i capture the title and the completed and here i have a class of item border one pixel solid green so if i come to the web page now you can see the result we have user id one id one tie to delictus or blah 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 anyways this is coming from here and completed falls you can see completed falls here so let's say there's an api that allows you to get a list of product or a list of users this is how you'd use the fetch api to make a request to that api get the items then render it on your web page another thing i want to show you here is the network tab so if you come to your dev tools and you come to this network tab you can see the different requests that your browser makes for each web page so if i refresh here you can see the to do's api so if i open this to do's api this is the response just as we saw here and also if you go to the headers you can see the request url this is where we made the request and the request method is get and the response was 200 and 200 means successful now let's see more ways in which we can use the fetch api so the syntax of the fetch api is you have the fetch method and then you have the url the api address that you want to make a request request you and then you have an options object as you can see here we do not use any options we only pass the url by default if you just pass the url the fetch method is going to make a get request to that url but you can tell the fetch method i don't want to make a get request i want to make some other kind of request now when it comes to api requests you have different request methods you have the get request and this get request is just like you want to get data from an api but you also have the post request you have the put you have the patch and you have the delete so how do we configure our fetch method to make a different kind of request we do that in the options but another thing to note here is there are certain api addresses that can only receive post requests and there are api addresses that can receive post and get and put there are some that can only receive put there are some that can only receive get and the way you know this is by going to the api definition so if you're working with a backend developer for example you can get the api definition for the different apis that they have available but coming back to our fake rest api here we can get the api definition it says you can use get for post you can use get for post one it says here that you can use post for post you can use put for post one anyways let's say the guide so here in the guide it shows that if you want to get a particular post you can use it directly so let's say we want to create a resource let's say we want to create a new post so now we know that this api address can accept 
the post method so that way we can get this api address and for this url i can paste this here and then for the options there are different options that you can use with the fetch method you can use a method option and by default this is get but you can say post put or you can say delete but remember this will depend on what the acceptable methods are for the api address if you pass a method that the api address doesn't support you'd get an error so here we can use post another option you can pass is the body so the body is the data that you want to send to the api address for example if we're making a post request to this api it means that we want to create a new resource and the data for that resource is what we pass to the body and this body can receive different data types but the most commonly used data type is a string so here we can say we want to pass a data of um, title this is my post user id 40 in a real world application you would get the user id differently another thing we can pass here is the is it the name what else does it accept oh we can pass the body and the title let's just say the title is dillion and then the body is this is my post so we want to send this to the api address and then for this body since we want it to be in string format we can use json stringify and then we can pass this data object another option you can pass when using the fetch method is headers headers are like metadata information that you want to send along with your request using headers you can define your api request in different ways you can pass authentication keys you can control key chain you can tell the api address what type of content you are sending for example you have the content type header and here you can have a value like application json which means that you are sending a data in the json in format you can also pass something like authentication and one common way people use authentication header is you have the bearer and then you have the authentication token but this is just an example the api address might tell you in your header pass an alt property or an alt key and pass a value like this but let's just leave it as content type application json there are also more options you can use with the fetch method there is the cage option there is the redirect option there are a couple of them but but on a basic level these are the three options that you would use let's come back here i'm going to expand my network tab and then i'm going to refresh so we still have our to this api request which is this one where we make a get request but here we have a push request so if you come here you can see posts and if we click on this you can see that the request url is this then the request method is post the status code is 201 and 201 means that a new resource was created but this is a fake API so the resource was not actually created on their server but they just sent 201 just to kind of indicate that this was a successful request and then if you come to the payload the payload is what you sent with your request here we sent a body with a this is my post title Dillion user ID 40 which is coming from here on the preview here you can see what is returned from the API as a response so the API returned a body of this is my post an id of 101 title of dillion user id of 40 although this is a fake api the idea here is that when you create a resource it would send you a response that contains the data that you have created you can use the preview tab here or the response tab to be able to see it in more json format again with the headers you can see the content type is application json so another thing i want to show you here is that the fetch method is asynchronous it returns a promise so if you want to make use of the data that is returned from this request then you would have to handle that promise now since it returns a promise we know that with promises if the process is successful we can handle that on the then method so on this then method we can get the response of the fetch api and let's say i do console log response just to see the response that is gotten from the request i'll go to my console tab if i refresh so the response comes in form of this object where you have the body you have the body use you have the headers you have a couple of things but as you notice here we are not actually seeing the data that comes from the api but on this response object you have a json method we can return the response dot the json method so we'll call this method and what this json method will do is that it would return the data in json format that comes from the response let's say i console log response 
method.json like this and I come here and refresh. The JSON method returns a promise and if it returns a promise then we can use the then method again to get the resolved promise. So here I can pass another then and um, before I do that I have to make sure I am returning the promise from. So I'm returning the promise from this first then then in this second then I can now get the resolved promise. So if I now do console.log resolved promise and I come here and refresh you can see once the promise is resolved we now get the data from this JSON method and this is the data that comes from the API. Instead of calling this resolved promise I can just call this data which means this would now be data. You can call this result you can call this whatever it's just a parameter for this then function. So we have console log data and if we refresh you can now see this is the data. Let's go back to this place and let's try out another API. Let's say we want to get the posts so I can use a method of get. I still have my post like this so I don't need to change the URL. If I come here and refresh oops okay you can see with the error here it says that you cannot use a body with the get or the head request method. So you can only use the body option when you have a method of post which means you want to send data in put you also have to send data in patch you also have to send data but when you're using get since you're trying to get data then you don't need to send any data with your request and that is why we're getting this error so if i comment this part or let's just say i take it out totally now i'm only using the method option and the headers option if i come here and refresh these are the posts that we get you can see a bunch of them and you can do the extra step of rendering this on your web page but for this video i'm just going to focus on the console so you can come to this fake api and try out the different api addresses that they have here and the different supported methods so this is how you can get started using the fetch api you can use this in a node environment or in a browser environment there are also other alternatives you can use axios axios is also a http clients for browsers and node.js and it's similar to fetch but it has more features it allows you to control your api request in different ways but for axios you need to either install it or provide it via your script tag or something like that but with the fetch you can see that we didn't have to install anything fetch is inbuilt in your browser environment in your node environment and in a future video i'm going to highlight some of the differences between fetch and axios so you know which one to use or when to use one over the other. I hope this video was simple enough and gives you a foundation on getting started with the Fetch API. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with others. I can also check out more JavaScript videos that I have created here on my channel.